Hi, this is Dan Smith of DPS Legal Counsel, and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk about um, computer security and encryption for physician practices. And this will be a short one, but it's an important one. Um, just in the last few days, um, it's, a notice came out that a health system uh, in the Northeast uh, was required to pay uh, a large amount to settle a, an alleged violation of HIPAA because um, a laptop had been stolen. Um, I think it was in someone's car and the laptop contained some uh, uh, personally identifiable health information that was not encrypted uh, for this practice. And so the practice settled with the Office uh, for Civil Rights, which enforces HIPAA on behalf of the federal government. And the practice, or it wasn't a practice, this was actually a, a, a nonprofit hospital system, but this would apply to practices as well. Uh, the system uh, had to pay uh, to settle this matter over a million dollars. Uh, and that's for the theft of one laptop that contains some unencrypted uh, patient information. So uh, the moral of this story and the reason for this video today is to uh, really make it, to emphasize how important it is to protect the security of the electronic uh, personally identifiable patient information or health information that you have as a physician practice. Uh, don't let uh, laptops, iPads uh, get out of your office and, and, and unless you are absolutely sure that the material on there that contains that uh, HIPAA protected information, patient information, make sure that that information is totally secure and encrypted. Now HIPAA itself doesn't technically require that patient information be encrypted, uh, although uh, the way the, 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 the HIPAA works is, although it doesn't mandate it, it pretty much makes it a requirement that if you, uh, to do it, because if you don't do it, uh, you're going to have to have a pretty good reason you're going to have to have a great reason why it wasn't encrypted. And so the safest thing to do and the recommended thing to do and what you must do really to be safe is to make sure that all of your patient information is encrypted. Now, uh, there, was a, there was a matter, oh, it might have been a year or two ago, where a similar thing happened and a, um, a portable device, I think it was also a laptop, was stolen or lost and the material on that laptop was actually encrypted. That would seem to be great, but the problem was that the uh, password to access the information was also uh, went missing, was stolen or lost, and because it was with the laptop. And so uh, although the, the material might have been encrypted, the key to unencrypt it was right there with it, and so in that case, the, um, the health provider also paid a hefty, steep um, amount to, to settle that matter with the government. So the same moral of, to the story, you have to make sure that you encrypt your patient information and you should also make sure you use good passwords uh, to access the information on your uh, electronic devices, your computers, your iPads, whatever, and make sure that the password is in a safe, secure place and not with the device. Um, I would suggest the possibility you might want to look into of using a password manager. There are, there are a number of password managers that are out there. And in addition to using a password manager for your devices, you might want to make sure that you have um, selected and set up to have uh, two-factor authentication in order to access material from your computers. 
two-factor authentication simply means that you've set it up your system, your security of your system, so that in order to access the system, in order to access the information, you have to do more than just enter your login, username, and password. It requires a second um, bit of information in order to access, access, access that information. For example, uh, sometimes with two-factor authentication, uh, if you uh, attempt to log in to your website or to your site that has your material, um, you will be uh, you will receive a code to a, a device that the company that has uh, that you're doing your two-factor authentication with that knows that you have control over a separate device other than the one you're trying to log into and it may send you a code to that second device in your control such as your cell phone that says your code is and it will have a five or six digit number or letters and numbers that you could then enter as a separate uh, factor or to authenticate your your login. There are other uh, two-factor authentications that are uh, uh, possible but uh, you should, number one, always make sure you encrypt. Number two, make sure you use good passwords. Number three, make sure your password's not stored with your devices that could, uh, that contain the, the, the secured materials. And fourth, you may want to look into two-factor authentication for your system. Um, you, you need to be really careful with your policies and procedures to make sure that you don't have portable portable devices leaving your office outside of your control with your employees that has uh, the ability for those devices to go missing, either lost or stolen, and then having patient uh, information um, unsecured. If you do that, then you, you shouldn't be surprised if you get into tr a problem because uh, the government is very serious about protecting and safeguarding patient information. Just this recent case uh, from the Northeast in the last few days where a health system paid over a million dollars for the loss of a laptop or theft of a laptop that had unencrypted uh, patient information. So I hope that helps. It's an important thing to do to make sure that you safeguard patient information. It's not a joke. If you haven't done it, you should Make sure you do it today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to call, and we'll see you next time.